John back here at Rockwest. Today we want to demonstrate how to vacuum bag. Today we'll demonstrate five different vacuum bags. We'll do a flat plate, which is the simplest. Then we'll do two versions of vacuum bagging over a large object showing pleats or dog ears sometimes they're called. And then we'll do an odd shaped subject like this is we line it up so that we have room on every side that's overlapping. Don't have the ability to vacuum bag to a plate. So it'll be five bags in total and uh, we'll get started. First bag we'll do is the flat plate. This is the simplest, uh, super easy to do. We'll put chromate around here. This is the vacuum bag. I've already cut it to size. Typically I cut these bags a little bit oversized so that we don't have to worry about the bag being off shape a little bit so I usually go half an inch to an inch over on all sides and then I can trim the bag off if I need to. So the first thing I want to do is put chromate tape around the plate. I always like to line up the tape with the edge of the tool that way it doesn't wander around too much. Notice how I roll the tape around the corner. That can help save on the problem of vacuum bag leaks if you have an overlap. Keep that right on that edge. And I just lightly tack it down so it doesn't move. We can go back and fix any wrinkles that we have later on. When we get back to this edge, if we ever have to do an overlap, we peel the tape back, overlap the tape, snip it with the scissors. Now we have tape all the way around the perimeter. We never want to forget our vacuum port. In this case, we'll put it on the edge. We're gonna pretend that there's a part under here. Never put this vacuum port on the part. It will leave an impression that looks just like that on the part. Now, the easiest way to do this flat bag is we line it up so that we have room on every side that's overlapping, and I peel it back on this edge. I always start in the middle. Make sure everything's still lined up. I tack it down and I go to this side and I just let the bag fall into place. It doesn't take much to hold it down. Peel this back, let it fall into place. You're trying not to have any wrinkles in the bag. Now the next step, some people like to start on the edges and work their way forward, but when they do that, they generally always put the bag at an angle and now you have all these wrinkles on the front that you can't get out. So, I start on the back edge, then I come to the front and I do the exact same thing where I start in the middle, I give it a little tug, tighten it down, then I go to the side, give it a little bit of tension, keep it tight and you notice that the bag has no wrinkles on that edge at all and that's the way you want it. The next step, we go to one side. I peel the whole thing off. If it's short, you can do that. If it's a longer piece, you might want to do a little bit at a time. But then again, I just let the bag fall over. I tack it down lightly so I don't introduce any wrinkles. If I do have some wrinkles, like you see here, I can just tug the bag a little bit and stretch the bag and the tape will take care of it. Now this part right here, you're gonna have some wrinkles, you're gonna have some air leaks in this corner and this corner. So we really have to push that down to guarantee there's no leaks. Again, we do this to the other side. Pull it down. And it really is pretty much that easy. At this point, we need to put our vacuum port on it. I like to cut an X. We have gotta be very careful that we don't cut the bag anywhere around it. I cut an X only on the center, and depending on which vacuum port you have, uh, will determine how you use it. But for most of the time, this is the method to use. And we just screw this one in. This vacuum port is available on the Rockwest website. I really like it. It's really small, really low profile. And then we just hook the vacuum up. And that's the bag. In some cases, we might need to go around and find any leaks that we have. Generally, you can hear them. But in this case, this tape that we sell at Rockwest, the vacuum bagging tape, is really good. It's really pliable, and it uh, 
takes care of those leaks. Sometimes I'll come back and tighten this up a little bit just to guarantee that that seal is nice. And that's a flat bag. You can come back and trim the, the bag back if you want to, but that's all there is to a flat bag. Really simple. Our next bag, we're gonna show how to bag around an object like this. This is relatively simple. It's got square edges, it's rectangular shaped, it's not round, but we're gonna show you how to do uh, pleats or dog ears. In this case, we'll need dog ears to line up with the edges of this because we need a bag to go over that. So we need a dog ear here, a pleat here, pleat here, pleat here, and then pleats here and here. We've got to piece on here, it's ready to go. We got our tape in place. Now we're gonna put the bag on it. In this case, we need bag to be bigger than the plate because we have profile here. What I like to do is, as a minimum, you measure the width of the tool, you add the height here, you add the height here, and then you have to double that because your dog ear is gonna go up and down. So that's two inches here, two inches here, times two. There's an extra eight inches that you need minimum. And then I like to add a few more inches to that. So I've gone from 31 inches to 42 inches I've got on my bag. And then it's the same here. This is a 24 inch, so my bag is roughly 36 by 42. You can see that my bag is quite a bit bigger on both sides. So that's going to count for this, and we'll still have bag left over. On the flat plate, we started in the middle and worked our way out. But in this case, we're going to start on the corners, work our way in, and then and work our way out. So we put our corners on first, keeping them close to the edge so that we can see how straight they are. And I keep using the term dog ear, but a lot of people use other terminology. Pleats is one of the most common. Next thing we need to do is we need to determine where the pleats are in relation to our part. So, and the reason why we put pleats in is so that the bag will actually go into the corners because we never want bridging. The vacuum bag will never stretch into the corner. So we need to have the ba enough bag in here to go into the corner so that we won't rupture a hole in it or get no pressure on the part. We bring our sides in to where we need our pleat to be. In this case, our pleat is right here. So we'll bring it pretty close to that there. We'll do the same thing on this side. Bring it roughly over there. We find the center of our bag in between the two pleats. Then we can peel the tape back in the center. We put that down. Now we can peel the tape back and we've created the unsealed pleat. So we have all of our pleats created, and now we need to seal the pleats. The trick is to get enough tape in there, but not too much. So what I like to do, get a feel for how much I need, add about an inch. You can cut it. I like to snap it off. Then, after I've got my tape, I make a fold in it, like that, and that gives me a little leg. I put that leg right even with the pleat where I want it. So I'll just set that down right on that tape right there. Now, this is the tricky part. We're gonna take this tape and we're gonna walk it right up the bag. The hard part is making sure that it doesn't stick to anything else and that you don't create any wrinkles. So I just walk it up there. If you don't stick it down, you can actually manipulate it a little bit. Now you'll notice that that tape is on there really nice. I can fold it over and I've got a good seal down here on the bottom. So my tape is in place now. The next step, I put my thumb in here to hold it open. Then I grab the tape, I pull it out, putting my thumb back in. Now I can fold it over like this, run the tape up the side, pull my thumb out, and close the loop. And that is a pleat or a dog ear.
you'll notice that it's got a seal all the way around the tape. Right here where you have it folded over, there can be a leak, so we want to push that down nice and tight. The reason why we do this is because sometimes we have irregular shapes. You can use this method for round tools, you can use it for oddly shaped molds, you can use it for concave or convex tools. This is sometimes the only method that's available for the type of tool that you have. So demonstrating it here on the flat makes it easier to demonstrate, but this is the method that you would use for just about any bag that is really irregular and not flat. We got all the pleats and all the dog ears completed, everything is sealed off. Now we can go ahead and vacuum bag this part. You notice the bag is pretty lumpy. Placement of our vacuum port is critical. We don't want to put it on a wrinkle. We need to make sure that the bag is tight around that. If we have wrinkles in the vacuum port, then we will have leak path that we don't want. And we're gonna pull it tight against the outside bag here. Do the same X across here, being very careful not to cut the bag in any other places. And screw it back in. Screw it down as tight as we can. Fitting the bag can be a little bit tricky, so first off we have to get some of the air out of the bag, so we'll suck it down most of the way. And using our beautiful pleats, we can manipulate the bag and get the bag so that it fits down into all those corners. Without the pleats, we would never be able to do that. We'll try it again. Also, we'll find leaks at this point, and we can also fix things. We've got some bridging over here in the, these corners, so we're gonna make sure that those are nice and tight. We can just pull and move the bag around as much as we need to. We don't want any bridging, especially for autoclave carrying this. If we have any bridging, then we will get punctures from the pressure of the autoclave. We'll actually punch holes if we have bridging. So we want to make sure that our corners are nice and tight. Check for leaks. With all of these pleats and dog ears, there's more chances of leaking than there is with a flat plate. So we have to go around and check all of our seams and all of our overlaps. And that is basically it. If you were to do a round piece, I would actually make the same number of pleats like this can of wax. I would make pleats here and pleats here, and that would give me enough bag to tuck in around here in a round shape. But I would probably want to make the bag bigger so that I had bigger pleats so I had more room to, to manipulate. Okay, so that's one way to do a pleated bag. Now I'll show the easier way to make a pleated bag, but it does use a little bit more chromate tape. For this one, we're going to do dog ears or pleats again, but we're gonna use a different method to create the pleats which makes it a little bit simpler. Some drawbacks to it, if you have an odd shaped tool or something like that, these pleats can get rather large and unruly. So for smaller things, it's, it's a good method, but for very large tools, it doesn't make much sense. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the same piece here, and uh, instead of putting our tape on here, you notice there's no tape here, I'm gonna put the tape on the bag, and that way the material is already in place, and all we have to do is create the pleats and fold them in place. Putting tape on the bag can be a little bit hard because the bag wants to wrinkle, and you can actually create wrinkles in it. So I like to tack it down and I always put it as close to the edge as I can. And I actually use the roll itself to keep the bag tight while I put it on. You'll notice I put some pressure here, kind of stretch the bag, make sure it's straight, and then take it straight to the corner. And in this case, I can't roll it around the corner so I have to cut it. We just repeat that four times. We put our bag over the top of it, paper side down, and then we bag it basically the same way we did before, where we start with the corners. We just line up the corners, tack down all the corners, start on the edge, lay our tape down to where we want our pleat to be. We work from the sides in, I find the center, we stick it down, then I run it up to the edge. Close the gap. So you can see how this could be really fast and easy. 
One of the biggest problems with this is right here in the corner. We've got possibility of an air gap right at the bottom where air can get in, so we just make sure that we tack that down really good. You can see how much faster this method is, but you can also see that it uses more tape here. If you've got a huge pleat, it gets kind of a little bit unruly, so you just have to be careful when you would use this method. That is all the pleats done. Putting the vacuum bag down is identical to previously. See some of the downsides to this method, and that we might have some extra areas for chance of leaking with all the overlaps. So you can actually hear the leaking that's going on. So we need to find those, and it's usually in these corners right here. And on these overlaps, we have quite a few leaks this time, so we're going to go around all the way around the edges and we'll find them one by one. It's faster to put the bag down, but you do have a bigger chance of having more areas for leaking. That's pleating method number two. Now we're going to demonstrate this seemingly odd shape. Not a whole lot different from the other one, but we're only going to have to use one pleat that comes down here. Um, and it's big enough that we can account for these steps that we have in here, so it's not going to be a problem. So we'll cover it up with some breather. We'll put this on here. This is a little bit simpler because we only need two pleats this time, so that's nice. In this case, we're going to tack down two sides entirely and then have a pleat on one side, so that makes it even easier. If we're tacking down an entire side, we always start right in the middle making sure that everything lines up. So we'll start here, and then we'll just carry it across, keeping it straight. We're not gonna pull it tight though, like we did on our other bag. Now in this case, we've got big dog ear right here in the middle, so we're just gonna pull this back, bring it to the center of the dog ear. And you'll notice that I moved the vacuum port away from the dog ear because if the dog ear's in the way, you'll have a hard time putting a nice flat surface for the vacuum port. So I moved that off to the side where it's gonna be flat. Once again, we measure, get a little bit more than we need because we always want to have a, a turnaround in there. Make a fold in it to make an L. Put that right where we want that pleat to be. Work our bag into the corner and then carefully attach it to the bag. Bigger pleats are actually easier than small pleats, but really big pleats are not any easier. They get pretty tough. We've got our bag in place. Carefully cut an X in here again. Get it most of the way down. At this point, we can take our bag and we can work it into these corners a little bit. Since we have extra up here, we did that on purpose. And that is basically how you do an odd-shaped feature like this, which in a lot of aerospace applications, this might be a, a rib of a wing or something like that. So this is actually a pretty common feature to have to work around. In this case, we're gonna make an envelope bag. An envelope bag is where you're not gonna bag to a tool, but you're going to make basically a hollow tube or something that you can just slide a part into, and then the bag envelopes the entire part. It can be very convenient for odd shaped pieces. I've got a bag here. When it's sealed off, I will have my part in here. I'll seal it up and then I'll vacuum that. What I've done is once I fold it over, and this is just one method of an envelope bag, you can actually do two pieces on top and do a tape all the way around it. But I've folded this one and when I line it up, then I put a little crease in the bag right here on both sides. That tells me where the center of the bag is. Because we need to put our tape on here and we only need it on half of the bag. So this is my crease right here. I'll take my tape and I'll put it just about a half an inch beyond that. And then I'll take it down the side here to the corner and I'll cut it off. And I'll do that to both sides. At this point you can then put the tape across the front of the bag. And that will give us a bag that we can slide our part into. So at this point, you can either leave the bag open and put the part in it and then close the bag on all three sides, 
or you can close off two sides and then slide the part in if you have that luxury. That's what I'm gonna demonstrate here. Bring this bag across, we'll line up the front edge. I'll have to put a crease in the tape here so that it folds properly. So I just put a crease there and I put a crease here. So at this point, I actually always want to start in the front like I always do. I start in the middle. That way I can guarantee that the bag is wide enough and straight across the front. Now I can take this and move it over to the edge and I'm gonna leave this tape in place because I wanna slide the part in there. Now at this point, this is a temptation to take the tape off and work it this way back, but we always wanna work from the front to the back because we have a nice loop back here that we can work with. Then when we get to the end, we can open this up, keep our thumb in there, pinch that shut. Now we have two of our three sides closed up. I should say actually have three of our four sides closed up. The other side is the bag. And now we can take our piece. We're gonna use the same piece that we had before. Always have to wrap it with the breather. And we can just slide this into the bag. Just like we had before. We will put our breather on there for our vacuum port. Now once that's in there, now we can close this edge up and we always start from the front again. The best is to always try to stretch the bags so it's tight, keeping it flat. And that will keep it from generating little wrinkles. Now all we have to do is suck the air out of it again. We'll do the same method before. Evacuate the air. And this time we can actually work it. I can put it down in there. You can see I've got some bridging here, so we'll let some air back into it. And then we can work our bag, and now that bridging is gone. And that is an envelope bag. Those are the basic five ways to vacuum bag composite parts. I hope this has helped, and uh, we'll see you next time.